Hey guys, Scott here. Today we're going to talk about one of the builds I was definitely uh, eyeing with Plot Twist, and that's the whole Plot Twist Power Struggle combination. For those who don't know, the Power Struggle build uses Power Struggle and Flip Flop. Flip Flop is a perk that makes it so when you're recovering on the ground in the dying state, that progress is transferred over to your wiggle state when you're picked up at a rate of 50%. And then there is Power Struggle, which makes it so if you are moved through a pallet on the killer's shoulders and your wiggle is past a certain point, you can drop the pallet and save yourself. Naturally, people combine those two perks and you can save yourself by going down at a pallet and recovering enough to the point where Flip Flop pushes you over the power struggle limit. And so Plot Twist was one of the natural ideas that would make a lot of sense with this build. And man, it's got some synergy. It's got synergy to the point I think it might be mildly problematic. I'm not 100% sure yet though. I need to try to go against it myself. I was using this on the survivor side, but right now, the thing is, it pretty much puts the killer in an absolutely losing scenario no matter what they do. If you go down when the killer is on the other side of a loop and it takes them like, you know, three seconds to walk to you to pick you up, you're going to get to use power struggle and the killer can't do anything about that. If the killer leaves you, then you just pick yourself up and negate the chase even further by fully healing. Now, grant that this is one time per match, but that can be a game losing play in and of itself, considering four people can have it too. Um, if the killer was right next to you and you use it incorrectly and they just immediately pick you up under the pallet, well, they're still picking you up under a pallet. If you have even a single friend with you in your lobbies, then the person can just save you. So the killer is basically in a losing scenario every single time. And this was pretty consistent. Now, I was playing in a survive with friends for most of my time. So I was playing with Zubat. And, you know, it, when you are in a group with even one person, you are basically invincible as long as they're a pallet on the map. There's really nothing the killer can do. If the killer chases the person away, then you recover enough. If they come back, you power struggle. If they chase them away, then and they don't come back, then you just pick yourself back up. So, like, you see what I mean? Like, the killer can never win in that scenario. Now, it's not so black and white, which is why I'm not sure if it's, like, overpowered or anything like that. Because, first off, you need to dedicate your entire build to it. You literally need all four perk slots. These are the only perks you can use. It's Unbreakable, Flip Flop, Power Struggle, and Plot Twist. You need this exact build. There's no room to mess around with it. And so that can be seen as a certain uh, downside to it. But if you really boil it down to it, why is dedicating a build to something that makes you essentially invincible in certain areas seen as a downside? Because you might think, oh, I can't run my dead heart or my exhaustion perk on there. But what do those perks do? Those perks are made to keep you off of a hook for a longer amount of time. They make you stay alive longer. And if the entire point of these perks that you can't use with this build is to keep you alive longer... Well, that's what this build does. It makes it so the killer can't do anything to harm you. So if, who cares if you're dedicating your entire build to it? It's already getting its value from how strong it can be. Now, the thing is, this is mostly stronger in Survivor with Friends. Even just groups of two is all you need. In solo queue, it's not so bad because if you're on a particularly short loop, for example, the killer might just pick you up immediately and you don't have anyone nearby. So all you did was just down yourself a bit earlier. Like you would have gone down anyway, but... You just down yourself a bit earlier in the chase, and that doesn't really do much for you. Um, it really only comes into play when you've got someone nearby to make the killer second guess picking you up immediately. That's the thing, though. There's such a like a anxiety when a survivor is downed under a pallet that someone is going to be nearby to save. That killers will usually look around at least for a couple of seconds, but that's all you need. If they look around for like four or five seconds, that's it. You can just save yourself. So it's basically just like gaslighting the entire killer community into thinking that there's someone going to be there to save them. But a lot of times there's not even anyone there. It's just, they just think that's going to happen. So, but still, even if you don't have a person with you, you can still use this build by yourself and have complete value from it. You just need to be smarter with it. The way you're smarter with it is you have to use the ability to down yourself at the pallet when the killer is at least like four seconds away from you. Now, if you had a really short junk loop or like a junk tile where the killer can wrap around it in three seconds to pick you up, yeah, you're not gonna, it's not gonna do anything and you just shouldn't even use it there. But if you're at like a jungle gym or something where the killer's gonna take four seconds to walk around the loop and come and pick you up, then there's basically nothing the killer can do. Every single option that they have is bad for them. Um, so that is the issue with the build. I think. Ironically, it should be better for solo queue and weaker in Survivor with Friends. That's ideally how balance would go because Survivor's Friends are going to be naturally stronger. But 
Unfortunately, this ends up being something that lifts the Rabbit Friends up even more, and Solo Queue can't benefit from as much, which is why I see it as mildly problematic. Again, it's a lot of fun to use. I recommend trying it. It is really kind of stupid, um, but we need to look at it from the same lens that we viewed, like, you know, the double locker saves of flashlights. Things that put killers in a scenario where there's physically no option that they have to come out on top is probably going to be seen as annoying. Again, even if you have to dedicate your whole build to it, um, it can be seen as extremely annoying. Now, obviously it runs out when you don't have any pallets left on the map. But like I said, even if this happens three times in a match, if you're chasing someone, you hit them and then you chase them, then they down themselves and all the time you spend chasing is not only negated because they get back up and then they get back up at full health, it's just like you've wasted so much time, even if it's only done to you two or three times in the entire game, that's still enough to make you lose. So very, very strong combo. I recommend trying it out right now as Survivor. Does it need a change? I'm not sure yet. I need to play Killer more and see what it's like going against it myself to form an opinion, but I would definitely try it out now because it is uh, admittedly a lot of fun to run on Survivor. That's it. Thanks for watching.